New York, New Rock, live music and promotion. Daryl Hell, New York, New Rock. We're here at the New Music Seminar. Daryl Hell, New York, New Rock. We're at the New Music Seminar, talking to women in music. And your name is? I'm Jane Cotton, and I'm the president of Women in Music this year. And what exactly do you do? Women in Music is a not-for-profit organization. We've been around since 1985. We're a networking and educational organization, and we have open arms to women in all facets of the music industry, creative and business. And you know what? We have men in our membership, too, so make sure you take an application before you leave. 20% men. And uh, where have you done, do you like do things in different clubs or? Yeah, absolutely. Every month we put on a couple of different events. And uh, for example, every month we have a brown bag lunch where we have an industry professional come down and we have a couple of businesses that support us. So we usually use their conference rooms. We have panel discussions at clubs and other uh, uh, hotels around town. Uh, but we also have showcases. And for example, September 27th, the bitter end at 730, we're going to be having an acoustic showcase featuring some of the best of our members. Mm -hmm. And um, do the... I sort of know how, don't know how to phrase it. Uh, do you think that the women are varied in like the where it's going, like where the the talent is going? Yeah, absolutely. We have women who have been in the business 35 years. Mm -hmm. We also have women and men who just started last year. So we really have an open door policy and we have different levels of membership depending on the experience that the person brings. We have professional uh, membership and associate membership. But uh, we really are open to everyone, open to meeting them, open to networking with them. So we welcome everyone to come on down and check us out. Our phone number is listed in the Manhattan Directory, Women in Music. <laughs> Great. So what are your, like, your future goals? Well, this year we have something very exciting going on. Um, we have a board of directors in place and officers, but this year in October we're going to get an honorary board together and we hope to get some prominent artists on it as well as some very top you know, record company people. And you know, once they're on that honorary board, um, we've got all their associations and all the people that they're associated with on board with us. So that's something very exciting. Also another thing we want to do is we want to reach out more to corporations and do more corporate fundraising so we can really get huge. Yeah, uh, how have they been so far? Have you linked into other other corporations, like smaller corporations at this point? Yeah, we've done a little bit um, of corporate fundraising. Um, we've gotten a grant from the Bank of Tokyo, but we're looking forward to you know going much farther with our corporate fundraising. And um, we also get sponsorship from a lot of the music organizations because they pay for their uh, the women who are in our organization for their memberships. But we want to get you know a lot more sponsorship. Great. It's been excellent talking with you, New York, New Rock. Any last statements? I just want to thank you guys for your time, and I look forward to seeing it. Thanks a lot. We're here with John Mayuma. Hello. Yeah, and what exactly do you do? What IUMA is, uh, first of all, what it stands for is the Internet Underground Music Archive. And what we do is we are the Nets first hi-fi free music archive and what that means is that we're taking bands from all over the world unsigned bands independent label bands and we're also dealing with uh, some major labels potentially and we take their music we digitize it we take a photo we scan that we take a bio and we type all of that in with all the contact information we package it all up and put it on the internet and for on the internet it's available to 20 to 30 million people worldwide and that's what we do. Exactly, taking the shortcut of distribution. Yeah, basically we're trying to bring the link between the artist and the listener just very direct. We want to um, also we want to try and flatten the music field such that all those underground bands that don't have the distribution suddenly have an equal distribution to the majors and uh, trying to sort of equalize a little bit of that. And it's one of the other things we're really interested in doing is getting more people involved in the internet because it's coming down, it's getting more and more popular, people are seeing it, and we want to make sure people are involved and know what's going on before you know big record com companies or other big industries come down and tell you what it's going to be like and put in all sorts of restrictions. We want to get them in there. So uh, that's, uh, that's what we're about. Cool. Well? How can they get in touch with you? 
Okay, yeah. if uh, you want to reach us, we're based out of Santa Cruz, California, and our phone number there is 408-426-4862, which conveniently spells out 408-IM-IUMA. <laughs> <laughs> And they can also um, mail us at uh, 903 Pacific Avenue, Suite 300, Santa Cruz, California, uh, 95030. And uh, if you're banned, we'll put you on. Uh, we generally we can do it for free, but people have sent us donations between 20 and 100 bucks to get this worldwide distribution. And it's all for a great cause. <laughs> great. Uh, what labels are you working with? Uh, we're working with some labels like Bedazzled, Teen Beat, we've got a, an excerpt of a song from DGC, and uh, have various other relations which probably shouldn't go into yet. <laughs> Great. Well, I hope we can help you get like you know the message out. That's it, yeah. That's what we're here for. Um, and uh, it's a very exciting thing because being the first people who have done this, we started back in November, no one else had, had done anything about it. and. Being here and being in the position of foraging and, and going into this new frontier is very exciting. What kind of music are you, like are you doing in general? Uh, that's the best thing. We're not restricting ourselves to anything. This is all about distribution, about getting the bands out there. We want rap. We want hip hop. We want you know alternative. We want rock. We want metal. We want jazz, acapella, everything. We've got you know industrial, uh, just pretty much the strangest stuff you've ever heard, and even going into really boring pop stuff. But hey, you know lots of people like that. Sure. Well, it's been excellent talking to you. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for giving me a, a chance to say something. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Honest opinions about the seminar? Uh, very good for us. Uh, we're doing a lot of making a lot of contacts. And, uh, you know, good seminar all around. You know, that's the main thing about you know, doing one of these things, just meeting people. Honest opinions about the seminar? I think it has changed throughout the years. You know, and I how? think ever since, you know, Tom, you know, has given it up, you know, it's not the same as it was within the first one through five seminars, you know. It has changed a lot, you know, especially coming back over here to this hotel. Everything is so spread out, you can't even find nobody where they at. It wasn't like at the Marriott, you knew where everybody was at in one certain place. Here, this thing is just all too scattered, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank cool. Honest feelings about the seminar? It's a seminar. It's a conference. What oh, do you come do? on, we want to know. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Honest opinions about the seminar? That was great. Honest opinions about the seminar? That's great. <laughs> Honest opinions about the seminar? It's good, man. Very good. Honest, <laughs> Honest, opi Honest opinion about the seminar? Uh, it sucks. Why? Um, it's really bad and all the bands suck except for the ones on my label. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I think it's very sassy. I'm having a, a very there, sassy. There have been quite a few hot guys and women for that matter that I've noticed walking around. That's about the best thing going on. And Eye candy. What's that? Eye candy. Exactly. And Rich Holtzman from 4AD. He's been a lot of fun. Hey, Kim Cascone, Silent Records. <laughs> 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 Okay, Honest opinions about the seminar? It's okay. It's okay. Why is it just okay and not great? I don't know. This is my first, so I've got nothing to judge it against. We're here with Volunteer Lawyers of the Arts, and your name is? My name is Mike Albo. Yeah, and what do you do? Uh, well, I run the publications uh, at the organization to sort of maintain all the different publications we have that are available for all artists who want to come to our office or want to call and uh, just get information about any kind of legal issue um, that might be bugging them or they might have problems with. Um, lots of artists, uh, we, well, Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts has been around for about 25 years. We're having our anniversary this year in the fall. Um, we're having this big benefit uh, and uh, just a lot of, we're having an exhibit um, of various artists that we've helped over the years and a uh, this sort of large fancy benefit dinner mm. that you know whatever um, but uh, basically the way we work is we have a we have all you know this uh, art law line that anyone can call with any sort of art related legal question that they have um, which includes musicians and I guess that's why we're at the new music seminar uh -huh. and what kind of issues have you like fought against or covered oh all different types um, for instance if uh, if from in, in terms of music uh, 
if an artist has a problem with a contract or they just got signed uh, to some sort of record deal and they want uh, one of their contracts looked at, we're happy to just sort of look over the contract and make sure everything's hunky dory and they're not getting screwed over. Um, and uh, we help, uh, we've helped artists with immigration problems if they have performing visa, performance visa that they want to get. Uh, lots of First Amendment cases. Um, in fact, we're uh, working on a case uh, right now about uh, artists who are exhibiting their works in the streets and are getting arrested for it, um, which has sort of been happening a lot recently since Giuliani's been in office. And, um, and we're working with artists, uh, an artist organization that sort of collected themselves around that issue, uh, the, the street peddling laws. And so that's one other issue. And um, where are you based out of? We're uh, at 1 East 53rd Street um, in Man Midtown, Manhattan. And uh, our number, our art law line number, if you want to call, um, it's always good to call first because they'll be able to sort of guide you about what kind of, what exactly you should be doing, what, if there's any sort of publication or if we can answer your question over the phone. It's, uh, the art law line number is 212-319-2910. Give us that one more time. Uh, if I remember it, 212-319-2910. Uh, Thanks a lot. Hey, this is Michael Brighton, publisher of Gear Magazine and uh, artist extraordinaire. We're over the topic, Gear. We've been in publishing for about three years now. We're coming up on our three-year anniversary. We're doing a nice, big, fat story with Trent Reznor, like who hasn't. We've been printing for now for the last three years, trying to get this, you know, hard industrial thing happening. We started out three years ago, a piece of paper folded in half. It was basically just a bunch of, you know, propaganda, get some press, get heard. Uh, this is before the internet was huge and before we could contact people that way. So, you know, what do we do? We printed up a piece of paper and we handed them out at shows in Philadelphia. You know, basically all expanded. Now we do 20,000 every single month all over the country. You know, you say, oh, another fancy, you know, yeah, that's nice. Well, here's the big difference. We come out every single month. You got other magazines, they're nice, Industrial Nation Permission, yeah, they do a nice job. But, I mean, we're talking first-rate writing. We come out every single month. We never miss a month. We never miss a deadline. Bottom line is we're here to inform you. We're not here to bend your mind. We're here to fuck up the mainframe. We're here to tell you the things no one else is going to tell you. You're not going to get it from your MTV, and you're not going to get it from your spin and rolling stone. It's basically a bunch of schmuck journalists waiting until we write about something so they can jump on it. You know, that's the bottom line. Covers in the last year, Chem Lab. Spawn Ranch, Screw, Jenna Torturers. I mean, we're basically covering the gamut, and the difference is no one's going to touch those bands and put them on the cover, but, you know, we revel in that. Number one thing, we're a free magazine. You're not going to pay for it. You're going to go down to your local, you know, hobnob mom and pop record store, and it's going to be sitting there on the counter. You're going to pick it up one month, and you might not get it the month after. So subscribe, send us 20 bucks, and we'll send you a year's worth. You know, this is a shameless plug, but the bottom line is information costs money. We want to make sure we get it out to you every month. All right, guys, take it easy. Jared and Matt, Chem Lab and Spawn Ranch. Great guys. A couple of the bands that we've really helped out. I mean, two years ago, I met Jared from Chem Lab. His band was basically suffering, you know, with 10 ton pressure with no distribution. You know, we're talking a year later, we have them on the cover. Now, all of a sudden, they're touring with White Zombie and, you know, all the likes of that. Bottom line is we're here to help people out. You know, you're an industrial band, you play with machinery, you like getting your hand caught in a drill press, you know, whatever. Just send us a tape, send us a demo. We're going to be the guys that are going to print it and do a feature. Uh, bottom line here is, you know, the seminar, there's a lot of great stuff here if you want to be a major label or a Yahoo, but the bottom line is nothing underground's happening here. You know, it's just a bunch of overprocessed bullshit spouted out by people that are just after your dollars. I don't know where we fit into all this. I've been basically just kind of hanging out and trying to take some stuff in you know what we're looking at is we're looking at some you know prime a bullshit being thrown here we're gonna give you the real scoop at gear and uh, we'll just see where we can take it you know our, our whole idea is to be the maximum rock and roll for the year 2000 and uh, you know I think we're pretty much on our way you know from a piece of paper folded in half to our three-year anniversary issue 20,000 strong every month you know I think I think we're doing it you know, uh, we're going to be getting on the internet, uh, probably something along the lines of gear. I don't know what our code name is going to be or overt uh, operation uh, 
slogan. But uh, basically, we just want people to like look out for it. If you think uh, you have a friend in Idaho that's not getting it, hey, just just tell us who they are, and we'll send them out a copy. You know what we're about is again the information highway isn't built yet, and most of us can't afford our own on ramp. So you know at this point, we'll let everyone piggyback on us, and you know we'll take everyone to the next level. So uh, I'm Michael Brighton from Gear Magazine for New York New Rock. Thanks a lot. Give you a phone number and address. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, well, if you want to contact us, you want to uh, give us a call at area code 215-552-8805. If you want to send us a package, you want to send that to P.O. Box 747, Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, 19050. And attention that to Michael Brighton, and it'll get to me. It'll get on my desk, and I'll listen to it. If I can't help you, I'm sure as hell going to find someone who can. So we're just going to keep burning out together, and... Uh, just signing off for New York New Rock. Thanks a lot. How are you doing? Honest right. opinions about the seminar? Um, too expensive. No chance to sit down in, and they're here normally. The seminar is kind of okay. It's, 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 not, uh, it's not at all that, that, that it used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Why is not it? I don't know. A lot of people didn't seem to come down to this. You know, it's uh, like what people were you expecting to be here? A lot more industry people that that we that we're more familiar with. A lot more dance people. Honest opinions about the seminar? Uh, it's pretty crowded right here. It's mismanaged, bad. Why? Why it's unorganized. Nobody knows anything. It's put together real bad. Is that your first time here? Yeah, it is. But I came with a couple of friends of mine that have been here before, and they're, they tell me, too, it's, it wasn't like this last year. Uh, honest opinions about the seminar? It's a load of hype. It's all bullshit. I'm sorry. It's a load of hype. <laughs> it's a lot of hype, in my opinion. Money so, talks here. That's right. Money talks. Money talks here. Walks. It's just so people can make their money. The hotel makes money. The I'll people tell you one thing. Space there ain't money. much new music happen at this new music seminar. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. This is uh, not to mention all the corporation sponsors and what should they call it? Rehash it the seminar. <laughs> they should call it the new corporate bureaucracy definitely, seminar. Definitely, most definitely lacking. <laughs> Thank you. We're at the New Music Seminar with the CMJ. Your name is? Diane Snyder. And what do you do at the CMJ? I do marketing and sales for the weekly CMJ New Music Report and work on all sorts of the other projects we do, the convention, consumer magazine, you know, corporate sponsorships, everything else. And what is the CMJ all about? CMJ is all about discovering new music and taking it out there and getting it exposed, getting it out to the rest of the world. How do we do that? Um, well, we have we do everything. We have the convention. We have 350 bands showcase. We choose bands out of thousands of submissions, very much like it happens here. We we have a lot more of a focus. We have college radio to work with to promote through. We have a huge college radio attendance, which are the ones that are looking for new music to play. They're looking for you know anything that nobody else has that might be the next big thing. Do you think that the majors are finally picking up on what you do? I think they picked up on what we do a while back, but it's now becoming a truly viable market. It's now they can, they have college radio departments specifically made to promote to college radio. They have a lot of field reps and they're able to release records specifically for that certain market, put them out and sell enough records to make money to continue putting out records for this market on a much smaller level to get exposure for these bands. And what are your future goals with the CMJ? Uh, CMJ just started a new consumer magazine. It's been out for a year. We just started distribution through Time Warner Inc. Um, it's a way to take the music out to the public. We, we cover a lot of new independent and not particularly commercial oriented acts in the magazine and we put out a full length compilation CD so people can hear the records as well as read about them and make their decision from there what kind of music they're going to go out and buy. Great, well it's been excellent talking with you. Take care.
at the NMS and we're here with Gauntlet. And your name is? My name is Keith Alexander. And what exactly do you guys do? Uh, we do all forms of body piercing. Like, uh, what's your specialty? We do it all. The 30 traditional piercings, we do them all. And uh, we do a lot of experimental piercings as well. What do you consider an experimental piercing? Uh, piercings that are surface piercings, surface to surface as opposed to through something. Piercings that pass under something we consider experimental. Back of the neck, front of the neck, arms, things like that. Uh, how long have you been doing piercing? Uh, the company's been in existence since 1975. I've been piercing for about four years now. I've been with the company a year. Uh, and where are you based out of? Uh, we have a shop in LA, a shop in San Francisco, a shop in New York City, and we've just uh, signed contracts to open shops in Bologna, Italy, and Paris, France. Oh, so franchising is doing good? Right? Well, I wouldn't consider it a franchise, but we, <laughs> we are international, yeah. And uh, do you think that now there's moving towards a, a bigger trend of piercing? Well, I wouldn't call it a trend. People are finally doing with their bodies whatever they want to do, you know, be it different hairstyles, uh, you know, tattooing, piercing, scarification, branding, all the body modifications. People finally feel like, hey, it's my body. I'm going to do, do with it what I will. Sure. I meant by that was like, you know, that people are finally loosening up, loosening right. up and, you know, now you can go down the street and see people with different piercings as a comparison to before. You know, maybe in the 70s it was harder. You, you would see like one out of every 20 people with like, you know, uh, a certain piercing that was different than like your ear. Well, it's just a lot more acceptable now. Uh, it's not that it's so much acceptable by society because we really don't care what other people have to say about what we do, but it's just that the access is there. It's a lot more accessible. You can have it done safely. Um, competently and professionally now a lot easier than ever before and people have that uh, outlet now they can come see us and have it done right and uh, thank you very much Great. you know okay. wish you good luck thank you very much honest opinions about the seminar uh, boring <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Why? Why is it boring? Actually, I've only been to, this is my first panel. Doesn't matter. We, we still want to know. I come every year and it just doesn't seem to get any better. Same shit. And why is that? It is um, in the evening, the shows at night. The rap shows. Okay. That's my favorite. Peace. Hon honest opinions about the seminar? Uh, it's, I don't know. It sucks this year. Why? Because all the shows suck. I don't know. I'm too tired to talk. <laughs> Yo! What's up, man? What's going on? Honest opinions about the seminar? Um, not really. <laughs> I think uh, most of the panels aren't really that interesting, but uh, I just came from the ambient one, and the ambient one was the only one that was worthwhile. New York, New Rock. We're getting honest opinions about the uh, seminar. Well, it's been real positive. The thing I liked about it is they had a real complete session, especially about kids and why they shouldn't be on drugs and why didn't they, they have an alternative against gangs. Honest opinions about the seminar? Uh, <laughs> real unorganized. <laughs> why? It's a lot, a lot of times it's just a big hassle, man. It's, it's people going crazy everywhere. Everything's running late. What do you think needs to be done? I don't know. Sometimes people just seem like they don't care, you know. Just maybe need to have a better, better attitude, I don't know. Do you think the uh, organizers of this, like, cared? I think they do, but, you know, you got so many, I mean, I understand where they're coming from. You know, but you got so many people here. But I don't know. I guess they're doing the best they can. Honest opinions about the seminar? <laughs> you don't want my honest opinion. We, I, we want your honest. Um, a little bit redundant. I've been to about six seminars, and they're getting a little bit boring, a little bit dull. They need to come up with some new concepts for the panels. Uh, just some more ideas for uh, new ideas for the panels, I guess. And what's uh, and what's your idea for the? And I also think that there's not enough industry people here, and too many kids from out of town that just come to want to hang and get in the business, which is okay. But more industry people need to come. 
Exactly. More, more executives, more people that matter and, and can make a difference. Thank you. Hi, Betsy. Hi, how are you? Hi, what you got here? Well, um, for attending the new music seminar and making all the panels this time, uh, I was awarded a free pair of socks. So you have the perfect attendance. Yes, yes, I yes, I did, didn't I? You did. I made all the panels and I took notes and because because of that, um, I guess they felt that I was extra special and I was given these socks by E. G. Smith. I think he's a composer. E. G. Smith. Guitarist, composer, G. Actually, Smith. he funds all of his recording projects by socks and other clothing items. Live music and...